What's up everyone, now it's time to learn the 3D stylized text effect. This one I used in the video for Samsung as well to showcase the title in 3D space in the intro shot. I think this is a super stylish way to add text to your shots, to place it in 3D space, such as you can see right here in the example. And yeah, you're going to learn this in this tutorial. So let's jump right in. In After Effects, I've already prepared my clip here and the first step is to drag this one onto the new comp icon. So now we have created a composition with our clip with the same size and frame rate. So the first thing you wanna do is to add the 3D camera tracker right here with the effect. So now After Effects analyzes the clip and 3D tracks the camera. We need this to then place text in 3D space. So depending on your clip length and size, this is going to take a few seconds to a few minutes and boom, the track just finished. And now we can click on the effect here and you should see those track targets, those track points here in your clip. If you don't see them, you might need to go up to view and make sure show layer controls is checked. If not, you're not going to see it even if you highlight it. When you see all of those targets, you can now select some of those. And I always like to create a solid to check the track and now it automatically created a 3D camera and a track solid. So now I can see if the track is actually working. So if the track is clean and good and I can work with that. So I'm going to place a solid here in 3D space and yeah, reposition it where I want the text to be. So I think somewhere around here, the text is good. To even have a better look, I always add a grid effect this way I can really see if it stays at the same position and it seems like it does a really good job. So it's well tracked. Perfect. That was literally the first step. The next thing, since we want to add the text behind me in space, we need to mask out myself. If you have a subject walking in front of the text, you just have to duplicate your layer. I name this one always rotoscope, drag the one all the way to the top. And now on the top here, I'm selecting the roto brush tool make sure resolution is at full. Now I'm double clicking on the rotoscope layer. And with the tool here, I can now select myself to mask out myself. So why do we do that? It's because when we have a clean selection, a clean mask of the subject, which is in front of your text, then you can make it look like I'm walking, in this case me, I'm walking in front of the text. That's why we need to isolate everything that should be in front of our layer, of our text layer in this case. So here you can go through the image and actually make sure the first selection is solid. You can deselect with pressing option and select when you see that green, green circle here. If you have parts you don't need, you can just press option, deselect these areas and this is probably the fastest way to isolate objects and people and yeah, mask all things in general. Um, I love rotoscoping, especially the 3.0 is really, really good. So make sure that first selection is good. You can change the brush size with holding down command. So this can also help if you have bigger areas or smaller parts. Now we have the hair here and for the hair, there's actually an option refine tool. And here with the refine tool selected, I'm going over the hair and now you can see we have a really, really detailed mask here on top. You can also change here through different previews. And here in that preview, I see my, my shirt is not selected. So I switch back to the roto brush and make sure my shirt is selected. So those different preview modes really help. And now when you're happy with your frame, you just press spacebar. And now After Effects is going to analyze frame by frame. And you can jump, of course, back in and deselect areas if you see that roto brush fucked something up. So here we're good. So I can press space bar again. Here I need to adjust things as well. So now we need to take care and make sure that all the areas that you want selected are selected. And the ones you want to mask out, those are deselected. I'm quickly going through this. Yeah, so I will see you in a second. All right, perfect. So I'm happy with the selection now. So all you gotta do is press freeze and now it's going to freeze your selection. It's really important to do that step after roto brushing your subject or what do you want to mask out to really press freeze so your selection gets frozen. Perfect, so now After Effects is done and we can jump back onto our main composition and right away we see 
that now I'm covering the part behind me, the layer behind me, the track solid, which we have used to check the track. So when we play it back, this looks really, really good. And actually it looks real because I need to be in front of everything that's behind me. That's just physics, I guess. <laughs> so this step is really important. And let's have a quick playback and see if the rotoscope looks good. All right, so now we can create the text. So I choose the text hole here on the top and now let's create the text and I want to name it Galaxy Z Flip 7. That's the name. And here on the right side, we can browse through all the fonts you have installed. You can go to Adobe Fonts and yeah, I would just take some time to browse through some fonts and define the ones you like. I like to use Nickel Gothic at the moment a lot. That is the one I also used in the edit. So now we have the text layer here. And now when we play it back, it's just sitting on top just as a two day layer. So now we can click that magical button here on the right side, which makes it a 3D layer. And right away it's in 3D space. And since we have already created a track solid here with the right position we want for our text, we can just open up position and copy paste the position data to our flip layer. Perfect. And now we have it at the same position. Now I'm turning off the track solid and now I can reposition and rescale the galaxy flip layer. So it is matching the size I'm looking for. And now make sure that text layer is below our rotoscope. That's why we rotoscope me, right? <laughs> so I think that is already looking pretty good. So now we can like really play around with the text, uh, with the style and make it look epic. So I want to squeeze it a little bit. So I just like how, how that looks. Something like that. So I come in, maybe we drag it down even a little bit. So now it's in 3D space. Perfect. And I think that already looking pretty good. You can also activate motion blur here on that layer. So this way it actually is going to react to the 3D camera. So if there's any shake in the camera, it's going to add motion blur because we're gonna have motion blur if there's some shake going on. So now let's make the layer even more interesting. What I like to do is with Command D, I duplicate this layer and call this one shadow. So now in set space here on the shadow layer, I can drag it a little bit back. And now if we open up the opacity, we're pressing T, we can bring down the opacity and now you can see we kind of create a shadow like in 3D space because now when we're moving, I think this just makes the title overall more interesting and just gives it more depth. You can change the position so it looks more interesting and I think this looks already pretty, pretty good. Even if it's not 3D, it looks a little bit more 3D, right? And what I like to do is to duplicate this one again and call this one outline. And this one here, we're gonna drag a little bit forward. And now here in the settings for the properties, I'm gonna disable fill and just go for the stroke. And now on this outline layer, I'm going also down with opacity. So this just sits a little bit here in front of that layer with less opacity. We can even change it to a little bit more of a gray and the position get maybe a little bit closer again to our original position like that. We have some kind of a 3D effect with just 2D layers placed in 3D space. I really like that. I think that is looking really, really cool. And I really like to play around with that. Now we can of course also animate the text. You can make it come in. You can add any text animations you like. If you're interested in text animations, let me know and we can cover this as well. But I think for now, this is already looking super cool. And this is how you can add text seamlessly in 3D space and also 3D stylize your text super quick. I think this is a great method, super fast and super powerful. So I hope you've learned a lot in this one and make sure to subscribe to the channel so we can create more of those tutorials. And of course, leave comments down below if you have any questions or if you just wanna give feedback or if you have any recommendations for tutorials, I would love to hear your thoughts. With that being said, wish you all an amazing day and I can't wait to see you in the next one.